Dear friends, I would like to share with you my experience with the living saint John Paul II. Of course, he passed away some time ago, but I had a great privilege of celebrating Mass with him in his private chapel in the Apostolic Palace. While I was studying in, uh, in Rome, in Gregorian University, doing my jurisprudence and doctorate uh, level studies, I was given an invitation to celebrate with him. So I was staying in the Canadian College. Around 11.30, 11.45, my phone rang. And of course, as usual, in, uh, in Italy, you will say pronto. <laughs> Not Toronto, pronto. Mm -hmm. That means you're ready, pronto. And the conversation began. It's some Monsignor from the Secretariat of the Vatican asked me tomorrow morning, that's almost half an hour, 11.30, midnight, and then in the morning, 5, 5.30, at the Bronze Gate, come with your alb and stole and your identity card and passport. So after hearing that, I profusely thanked Monsignor, but after hearing that, I was so excited, I could not sleep. I just sat there in my chair and began to meditate what that would be. Not even everyone had experience going into the Apostolic Palace and seeing everything. And so, as the time passed by, around 4, 4, 30, okay, shower and all that, and then I began to, what to wear, you know? <laughs> what to wear? Of course, I had my jacket and the Roman collar. We have to have it in Rome. As students studying anywhere you go within Rome, you wear this uh, clerical dress. So, everything is ready, passport, my identity, stole, alb, and all that kind of, you know, all ready to encounter the Holy Father, John Paul II, in his most private chapel to celebrate the Holy Eucharist. So around five o'clock, I began to walk towards St. Peter's Basilica, beautiful, magnanimous, magnanimous basilica, magnificent basilica, beautiful lights around. Only some clergy walking here and there in the colonnades uh, of St. Peter's uh, Basilica Piazza, the San, San Pietro, as they call it. So I went to the bronze gate there. It's a big, 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 big door, bronze door. Exactly at 5.30, the door opened, and there was a lay person, well-dressed, and the Swiss guard. They called my name, Padre Vincenzo Pereira, see. Then they said, come forward. And with my passport and identity, and asked me to stay there, they saw everything ready, and they told me to stay aside. There were also other few people, a few priests, and a few lay people as well. So one batch of us, then we are crossing the um, apostolic palace in the ground floor light, and then we went to, uh, near, stood near the elevator. And when everybody was there, there was a second Swiss guard there, well, a beautiful Swiss guard, and he opened the door for our elevator, and then we went up to the Apostolic Palace. In the study room where Pope signs and meets the people, dignitaries and so on, there we were ready, no camera allowed with us, only the alb and the stole, and we get ready. By the time when we reached there, it was almost 6.30ish in the morning, and then, his personal secretary called us, it was Zdivich, his name, Monsignor Zdivich, he asked us to come to the chapel. So close by there, near his study room, little chapel, just a little chapel, 15, 20 of us were there. And the Holy Father sitting down there, meditating since five o'clock or so. Very spiritual man. My heart was full of joy, it was like an experience, a mouse experience, when, when, when the 
uh, apostles said, disciples said, that when he was when Jesus was opening up the scripture, our hearts were burning with joy and zeal and so on. The similar, I was ecstatic, sitting down there admiring right behind the Holy Father. Exactly at seven, he stood up. He had already vested himself, and the mass began. You know, that was like an immense joy to me. I was not there at the Last Supper of Jesus for similar experience. Being present with the Holy Man, Holy Father, John Paul II, and celebrating the Mass. It was in Latin, beautiful, simple, no singing, all just straight prayers and the Holy Mass. And after that, after the Mass, everything was fine. After the Mass, we we came to his study room and stood in line and he came to us meeting everyone shaking hand and just one or two words what do you do and i said i'm a doctor student and he said felicitasio felicitasio where, where are you from he said Warhol. and then he looked at me <laughs> at that time he was looking down like looked at me Warhol. he loved canada that's why longest uh, pastoral visit he made in canada 11 days wonderful wonderful holy father and blessed us all and we we're so beautiful calm quiet serene and beautiful blessings after blessings i felt really grace filled in this most private chapel a small little chapel you know jesus was present everywhere but when we look at the basilicas and cathedrals are magnificent basilicas and cathedral and you think of the money so much around them. then there is a little private chapel simple ordinary private chapel and i was there celebrating concelebrating the mass with the holy father and as i was coming the beautiful marble flooring and everything big big large paintings of great people great painters as I was coming down, I was thinking about many of the predecessors of the Holy Father passed through this way. Pope Pius XII, my memory goes back. Paul VI, who is a saint now. Before that, John XXIII, who is also a saint. Then, John Paul I, 33 days of smiling Pope, passed through those corridors, those steps, and meeting everybody. And I came home. But that glow remained in me all this time, meeting a wonderful, wonderful saint. He preached peace and joy. His main words were, fear not. Do not be afraid to preach the proclamation of the word of God. Ever since, he was my closest and wonderful saint because I personally met him. So also I met Mother Teresa, but here is one person, international, so also Mother Teresa, international. And you know, simple thing is this, that when he died and people gathered, throngs of people, sea of people gathered in St. Peter's Square and said to him, Subito Santo, it's a famous statement of the people. People clamor, proclaim, acclaim, make him saint now. Celebrating Mass with him made me think I, he was in my book, in my heart, in my mind, he was already a saint. Already a saint. And so it was something great. He saw some things that we could not see. He pursued some of the things in the societies, in the world, we could not see. He determined to proclaim the gospel, the freedom, Freedom from just to Poland and other countries too, visiting Cuba. And all when we when we look at this giant of an apostle, and I at the time thought, if Jesus were to pass by and saw John Paul II, I think he would have called him Peter, the rock. And he was a solid rock upon which the church is built. This church, we serve and celebrate the Holy Eucharist.
I am grateful to the saints and John Paul II. Pray for us, for our youth, for our children, for our families, especially in this time of slightly restrictions being relaxed. We are grateful. May the saint intervene for us and bring much freedom as we had it before. Amen. As I always say, I love you people and you love me too, but I pray for you constantly and in turn you do the same for me. You can count on my prayers. God bless you. Bye for now.